I want to tell you something that the name of Jesus can be a pin upon which you hold your tent but it can also be a weapon from whatever that is in your tent that's not of God. The name of Jesus Christ can be that thing. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of this week's Hungry Generation TV. I am excited because I know God's life is going to flow through this channel for your life today. The power of the name of Jesus is going to work wonders and miracles in your life today. We have an amazing show in store for you where we will talk about the name of Jesus Christ and the power that name has to deliver you, to save you, to heal you and to bring blessing into your life. Also in this episode, we have an incredible testimony, probably something you have never seen, a live birth that happened in the church in Africa, a church that we are close with of the ministry of TB Joshua. And also you're going to hear another testimony. So next 30 minutes, I believe, can shape your destiny. It can touch and change your life. And so please sit tight and watch this message and then I will come back to introduce you to some testimonies. This woman finds a pin. She finds a pin. The scripture says a tent peg. A pin that you use to put and to make a tent secure. By putting this pin through a tent into the ground, you make tent become secure. And this woman takes a pin that is not a weapon. This pin is not a weapon of murder. And she turns this pin that's used to hold a tent, she turns this pin into a weapon against her enemy. This pin was supposed to hold her tent, but she used this pin to kill the enemy in the tent. You know, when we go to jail, before we went to jail, they told us there are certain things you cannot bring with you to jail. One of those is paper clips. And we would say, why? You can't bring paper clips. And when they told us what they can do with paper clips, I was amazed. The normal things that you use as things for your paper, the things for your books, the things for your school, can be used as weapons. Not every person sees those things as just to pitch a tent. Some people use it as weapons. Now, we all have one pin that God gave us. To hold our tent secure in this world it's called the name of Jesus Christ the scripture says if the righteous man runs to that name he is safe the scripture says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what saved. whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what saved. is there anybody who is saved in this room see when you have this pin you lock your tent into the world of God when you have the pin of the name of Jesus Christ, you are secure. It brings security to your life. But see, some people use this only to bring them salvation. But there are other people like Apostle Peter who took that pin that your life and my life has to secure us with Jesus, to give us peace with God. And he said, yes, this is a pin to hold my tent, but this is also a pin to kill sickness. And he went to a man at the gate called Beautiful. And he used the name of Jesus, that pin, that pins my life to God. He says, this pin can be also used as a weapon. And he uses that same name that we call upon to get saved. He uses the same name to drive into the head of a sickness. And the man rises up out of the sick by the name of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something, that the name of Jesus can be a pin upon which you hold your tent. But it can also be a weapon from whatever that is in your tent that's not of God. The name of Jesus Christ can be that thing that holds your relationship with God together. But it also can be the weapon through which anything that's not of Jesus in your tent can die. Can die. Can die. 
for the glory of God. My friends, pins, the name of Jesus is not only for salvation. The scripture says when disciples came to Jesus, they said that by your name, demons leave us. They said, Jesus says, you will cast out demons by the power of my name. That is why God said, if anyone says my name in vain, he will be guiltless. He will not be guiltless. That's why God says he lifted the name of Jesus above every other name. That's why disciples of Jesus were commanded by Pharisees, do not mention that name. You can preach about Moses. You can preach about Elijah. You can preach, but do not dare to mention that name because that name has power. That's why disciples were rejoicing when they got beaten, not just for Judaism, no, but for that name, the scripture says. There's no other name in this world that has this much power. But my friend, it could be used as a pin for the rest of your life. It secures my relationship with Jesus. I go to church, I read my Bible, I listen to preaching, I listen to worship and I secure my life with God. I am a child of God. But this woman takes the same pin and says, you know what? This can also be a weapon. My friends, can we recognize the power of the name of Jesus? That it's more than just a ticket to heaven. It's also a weapon. And the spiritual realm knows this. And the spiritual realm understands this. It's a pin that can drive your enemy to death. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In one uh, city in Cambodia, it was about 15 to 20 years ago, there was one time they, they decided to come and to, there was this dictator that rose up, communist, and decided to just wipe many cities away and came to this one city and they lined many people up and started shooting people, killing people, and there was about 20 people left. And they came to this lady and the lady was there and before they shot her, she started to cry out and he, she says, a God who died by execution, save her, save us, save me, save my family. And she screamed again louder. And so the person who was holding a pistol, she heard, he heard this cry, a God who died by execution. Because somebody told her from different sources about Jesus who died by execution. But she didn't know the name. She didn't know how it happened. So she said, the God who died by execution save us and the guy took the pistol back into his place and ran and they left at 15 people those 15 people didn't un understand what happened why did he leave what happened what did that prayer meant this God who died by execution they didn't even know his name about 10 years later this little village unknown and disconnected from other villages in Cambodia continued to develop until one American missionary decided to go as a missionary to remote areas in Cambodia and they went to this village to preach and this missionary took a cross because he did not know the language very well so he took the cross and came and started to demonstrate with his mouth and hands and feet of how Jesus died by execution and to his surprise, when he asked people if anybody wants to give their life to Jesus, the whole village came to the front and they gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And then through the translator, he asked them, why did they respond so quickly without understanding my message so clearly? And these villagers, they said, they said about 15 years ago, we saw our friends dying. And she says, we heard something about this God who died by execution. And we did not know exactly his name. We did not know that his name was Jesus. We did not know that his name was Christ. We did not know that he was son of Joseph and Mary. He was man of Nazareth, a son of God, a son of man. We did not know anything of that. We just heard that he does miracles when we call upon his name. We did not know exactly how to even say his name. And when we cried out to his name, he says, something happened to those people who were shoot shooting us some power took them back and they left and she says that's why we are here and she says for 15 years we've been praying to this God asking please send us somebody to tell us more about this name and he says we anxiously were waiting for you to come and tell us about Jesus Christ there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. thank you Jesus for your name the name of Jesus has power like in this story that you just heard from book of Judges where this ordinary lady took a tent peg, something that's supposed to hold a tent. But she didn't just use it to hold her tent, she used it also to conquer her enemy. And see, as a Christian, we believe that Jesus, the name of Jesus, is what holds our life. The name of Jesus is the pillar that supports our tent. 
It supports our emotions, supports our faith, supports our salvation, supports everything. And the same name of Jesus, it can support your life, but it can also defeat your enemy. It can also defeat your sickness. It can also defeat your addiction. We're about to watch a testimony. You're going to have an opportunity to watch a testimony right now of a lady who had a complication with her pregnancy. She had a baby that she delivered before with a surgery. And now she was not able to deliver a baby without a surgery. And Jesus performed a miracle. This lady came to a church in Lagos, Nigeria, in the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua. And in the middle of the service, Holy Spirit did an operation. And the baby came out. Uh, embrace yourself. Because what you're about to see can really challenge you. It will challenge and encourage your faith. So let's go into this testimony where you will see the name of Jesus working wonders in the life of a person who had a big problem. This prophetic message was given to Pastor Lorena in the early stage of her pregnancy. Some time later, she returns to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, confirming the prophecy from wise man John Chi that she had indeed been booked for an operation in order to deliver her baby. Let's watch what happens as she returns to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. During the live Monday prophetic service at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, as the wise men were ministering to the congregation, a woman who was in labor for six days, unable to give birth to her baby naturally without an operation, was rushed from the hospital to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. My name is Pastor Lorena Ramoselli. I'm from Edo State. The problem that brought me is the problem of operation. I had operation before. Now that I got pregnant, I went to the hospital to deliver normally. So only for me to get there. The doctor said that the place where I did operation before has hooked the head of the baby. That the baby cannot come down. The only advice is for me to do elective CS. Okay, tell us, for how long have you been in the hospital? I've been there for like a week. So how many doctors have told you that you have to undergo operation? Two doctors. I believe the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua will deliver me, my baby. Jesus help me! Jesus help me! Jesus Lord Jesus, open the door of my heart to your word. Open the door of my heart to your faith. Open the door of my heart to your spirit. Open your lips and begin to pray. Today is the end of your trouble. It is yours for the asking. One of the evangelists calls for the attention of wise man Christopher, and he swiftly paces his way out of the auditorium to where the woman lies in a critical condition. Let's hear from her. Man of God, help me. Help me to deliver my baby normally. Doctor say that I will do operation. And I've done operation before. I don't want to do operation again. Because I've been watching him on the TV. And I came here because I know God will help me to deliver safely. Man of God, help me. Our Father and the Lord, Senior Prophet TB Joshua, has sent us in the name of Jesus to pray for you. We believe God will make a way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. deliver your baby safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, manifest your strength in her weakness. Lose her, Lord, from every bondage. Give her the grace to deliver this baby in Jesus' name. Amen. Come out! God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, there is no God like you. Oh, God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, you are my God for everlasting. Thank you, Jesus. No more oppression. Acabamos de ver el video de esta mujer cuando recibió profecía del hombre Yonchin y después regresó a la sinagoga para poder dar a luz a su bebé sin operación. Look at your screen. This is the woman coming forward with her newborn baby to share her testimony. Praise the Lord! Emmanuel! 
My name is Pastor Lorina Eramosele from Treasureland Christian Center, Benin City, Edo State. The man standing beside me is my dear husband, Pastor Samuel Eramosele. The problem that brought me to the Synagogue Church of All Nations is the problem of operation. Now, I had operation when I had my third child. And that was as a result of bridge presentation. Now, I was in church earlier this year when I was having crisis. And God located me through wise man John Shi at the early stage of the pregnancy and gave me a word that there was a journey before me. That is the journey of operation that I have gone through before. That this is another one and I'm not going to go through it. And he prayed for me. And that prayer took me through the process of healthy pregnancy. There is a pastor on the gallery, Pastor Samuel, come with your wife. Pastor Samuel, come with your wife. This is Pastor Samuel and his wife coming out from their seats on the gallery, just as wise man John Chi prophesied stating that there was a pastor named Samuel on the gallery and that he should come out with his wife. Let us see what happens when they meet the wise man. Pastor, you are welcome, sir. Madam, the reason why I call you, sir, this woman should not attempt an operation because there was an operation. That is I'm true. still seeing another operation. That is true. It's true. The last baby we had was through operation. I'm still looking at another operation. The Lord will deliver her. Amen. God has committed himself. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is over today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Out! This is deliverance in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Pastor Samuel and his wife have just received deliverance from that which caused her to be operated on during pregnancy. Now, when it was time for me to deliver this baby, the water ruptured and I went to the hospital. After observation and examination, the doctor said that the process of labor was too slow and it was causing distress for the baby. So he said that the only way out would be to operation because the process was slow. And he said I should get ready for the theater or I should be discharged out of the hospital. Myself and my husband left the hospital and we went to another hospital. After another examination, I was told that the head of the baby was resting on the stitch of the former operation I had. And it was medically impossible for me to deliver normally. The only way out was through operation. And that brought me quickly to what Wise Majon she said at the earlier stage of this pregnancy that I should not undergo operation. And we, myself and my family and ministry, being sold out completely to Emmanuel TV, watching it and seeing the wonders of God, we came straight to the Synagogue Church of All Nations after spending well over six days in the hospital. At this point, I was getting tired because the contraction was increasing. So I came over to the church while the service was going on and I was taken over to the emergency session. At this point, people of God, I was already getting weak and I was tired. There was no strength to push. But the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, sent wise man Christopher to pray for me. As wise man Christopher came and prayed for me, suddenly strength came from above. The baby was distressed according to doctor's reports. But as he prayed, the strength came upon me. And at one push, the baby came out with so much life. And I delivered my baby safely, without oppression, to the glory of God. Wow, 
What a miracle. What a God that we serve. What a God we have to worship. What a son we have to praise. And what a future lies before us. This lady received her breakthrough. She received her baby without a surgery, without a doctor. And not that doctors are not good. They are servants of the Lord. They are helping us to get healthier. But this lady saw the name of Jesus working wonders in her life. And this baby was delivered safely. And they are pastors, as you heard in its testimony. And actually, after a week, uh, their doctor called them. And the doctor asked them, you know, how are you doing? And the, the husband of this lady said that, we're doing fine. The baby is out. Everything is good. The mother's doing great. And they said, what, what hospital did you go to? And they said, no, we didn't go to hospital. She gave birth in the church. And the doctor couldn't believe it because it was so ridiculous that somebody gave birth in the church. But see, church is a place for miracles. And Jesus does those miracles. I want you to watch another testimony. I want to convince you today that the name of Jesus has power. The name of Jesus is like the tent peg. It can support your life, but it can also defeat your enemy. It can also defeat cancer. It can also defeat poverty. It can also defeat addiction and every problem. The lady you're about to watch, she had a cancer. And because of that cancer, she lost all of her hair, which is the woman's beauty. And because of that cancer, her life was almost being destroyed until the name of Jesus came through for her. So watch this testimony. Sitting holding up a placard is Miss Edith Afesime, who is 36 years old from Edo State, Nigeria. She has come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations with the problem of ovarian cancer and a loss of hair due to chemotherapy. Alongside her placard is attached a medical report outlining Edith's medical condition in detail from the hospital where she received treatment. A closer look reveals a negative side effect which the chemotherapy treatment has had on Miss Athesume. A complete loss of hair has left her totally bald, depriving her of her natural covering of hair. A woman's beauty. As the camera moves round, you can see that truly there is no single hair on her head. Seen here is the prayer line section of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, where people have come from many different nations of the world in search of a solution to their problems. Among them is Miss Edith Thefisime. Not do anything. Jesus Christ. Watch the screen of television. Healing has commenced in the life of this woman with the problem of ovarian cancer. And because of chemotherapy, she is suffering from loss of hair. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Three years later. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Here we can see Miss Edith of Fisume before and after her healing. What a radical transformation that has taken place in her life. A once completely bold Miss of Fisume now testify of her total healing. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer, the Repairer and the Restorer. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. My name is Edith Afesume. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of All Nations is ovarian cancer, loss of hair due to chemotherapy when they placed me on chemotherapy because of the cancer. So the doctor said, if I didn't take the chemotherapy six months, I will die. So it's the first cause that they gave to me. That is the first dose that removed my hair. So now I now come to Synagogue Church of Air Nation, where 
Pro senior prophet T.B. Joshua, now strength is anointed hand on me. And immediately he prayed for me. I received my healing. So before I cannot do things on my own, immediately that day he prayed for me. All the things that I cannot do, I started doing it. I cannot touch my tummy before. I was having pains. I can't mash ground like this. All my stomach is pains. So even to lift a bucket of water from the ground, I can't. But immediately that day, when I reach home, I lift up my bucket of water to be true. I do everything on my own. So my hair started growing. Even the cancer gone immediately. So this is my hair. I thank God for what the Lord has used senior prophet T.B. Joshua to do in my life. Praise the Lord. Wow. What an incredible testimony. What a God that we have. What a name that we have. The name of Jesus that does miracles. Like the Bible says in His name, we can cast out demons, heal the sick, and do all great exploits for the kingdom of God. And this lady, you saw what cancer did to her. And you saw what the name of Jesus did to her. Today you heard about the name of Jesus. If you are not saved and you're watching this, I want to tell you something. Jesus wants to be the person that holds your life. If your life is falling apart, He wants to be your life. If you are confused, He wants to be your way. If you live in darkness, He wants to be your light. If you are hungry, He wants to be your bread. If you are thirsty, He wants to be your water. He wants to be your everything today. I ask you today, please give your life to Jesus Christ and your life will never be the same. Because He can be the, tent, the, the peg that holds your tent. Well, maybe you're watching right now and you're sick. Maybe you're watching right now and you're addicted. Or maybe you're watching right now and you have an enemy living in your tent. You have a secret sin. Or you have an addiction that you're battling with. I want to tell you something. That name is also powerful to help you in your situation. Right now, at this day, at exactly right now, Holy Spirit, distance is not a barrier for God. He can reach you where you're watching right now. I want to pray for you. And so if you are able to bow your head, please do so. If not, I ask you to do one thing. I ask you to open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Open your faith to Jesus and Jesus will meet you because to God, distance is not a barrier. So let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, I ask you for every person that's watching this telecast right now. Every person that's watching this online or in front of their TV screen. By your Holy Spirit, conquer this distance and reach them right now, Holy Spirit. Let the name of Jesus be their tower and be their safety and be their pillar in Jesus' name. Lord, if there is anybody who's watching who is sick, maybe they have cancer, maybe they have arthritis, or maybe they have any other disease, in the name of Jesus, I command that sickness to go. Or maybe any addiction or any depression or spirit of stress or spirit of heaviness, in the name of Jesus, I command it to go right now. And let healing, let peace, and let joy of heaven flow even through these airways to any person that's watching this. Let Holy Spirit fill the room right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Thank you for letting us speak to you. Thank you that you have watched and I know that your faith has been challenged. Please let us know if you have praise reports or prayer, prayer requests. We would love to stay in touch with you and pray with you some more. Keep God first in your life and He will take you to places you never dreamed of.